Good morning and welcome to Today on a Sunday Morning. I'm Lester Holt in Henryville, Indiana. And I'm Jenna Wolf, along with Carl Quintanilla inside Studio 1A. So here's the latest now on the storm aftermath. 37 people are confirmed dead, including 20 in Kentucky, 12 in Indiana, and 3 in Ohio. The National Weather Service says the four twisters to hit Kentucky were the worst in the region in 24 years. Henryville, Indiana, where Lester is, was hit by an EF4 tornado, packing winds of 175 miles per hour. That twister stayed on the ground for more than 50 miles. And in one sign amid the hope and the destruction, a two-year-old girl named Angel was found alive but badly hurt. However, the rest of her family did not survive. We'll have her story coming up. And Lester, you've been in Indiana now for more than 24 hours. How is the community there coming together? They're cleaning up. We woke up to the sound of chainsaws here. As the sun came up this morning, people will be going to a special church service in a damaged church a bit later on this morning. You know, when I came here, uh, trying to wrap my mind around what I was seeing was difficult. It's hard to comprehend sometimes what you're seeing. It took me a while as the sun came up this morning to realize, Jenna, that's a metal mobile home trailer wrapped around that tree, giving you an idea of the force of the winds. You mentioned that EF4 tornado on the ground for some 52 miles. In fact, there was a second tornado, a smaller one that came through here and kind of completed the destruction you see around me. We talk about buildings and houses is demolished and obliterated. This is what I mean. I'm walking to the foundation of someone's home, or at least where that home once stood. There are the water heaters right down there. And up here is the front porch that now leads not to a house, but to destruction. This damage, of course, has been seen in other places up and down where that line of storms hit. Another hard hit town is nearby Marysville, Indiana. It's about nine miles east of here. NBC's Tom Costello is there for us this morning. Tom, good morning. Hi, Lester. Good morning to you. And this is what an EF4 storm looks like up close and personal. 175 mile per hour winds. There is just simply nothing left. It kind of reminds me of the photos and the images we saw out of Japan after the tsunami uh, last year. Take a look at this. This is a semi truck that has been picked up and tossed into a massive tree. The trees have been uprooted. Every single branch has been stripped. The homes here have been reduced. Well, if they're standing at all, they're certainly not habitable, but most of them have all been reduced to pieces of wood. You know, we've got stories, Lester, of children uh, laying on the ground, mothers laying on top of children to protect them, fathers on top of mothers. I think there's really only one word for all of this. It is quite simply awful. There is little left of Marysville, Indiana. While no one died here, this tiny country town of 1,200 people has been nearly wiped away. Meanwhile, in nearby Chelsea, the Jackson and Cleffer families are feeling the storm in an all-too-personal way. I can't even begin to tell you how I feel about that. That poor baby. He was only four. Terry and Carol Jackson died when their home was torn apart. Also dead, their four-year-old great-grandson, Daylon, ripped from the arms of his mother. She is now in the hospital. Survivors' personal images capture the moment the storm tore through. It looked more like it was rolling instead of spinning, but it was wide. The tornado tore the Cleffer family home from its foundation, dropping it 100 yards away. On the road into Henryville, Indiana, trees and homes have been stripped or destroyed. Lives upended. More than a dozen people died in southern Indiana. Across this area, the growl of chainsaws has replaced the tornado's roar. Indiana's governor described the damage as incomprehensible. All the things that mere mortals can do aren't enough uh, sometimes. Among the most heartbreaking stories, that of a two-year-old girl found alone in a field. We put armbands and everything on the children just to identify them and found out pretty quickly that nobody came with this little girl. Late Saturday, word that the child's parents, her brother and sister, were all killed. She remains in critical condition in Louisville. In Kentucky, at least 20 people had been killed, 300 injured. It chokes you up. You don't know where your family is. It chokes you. Four were killed in West Liberty alone. The town still reeling from another deadly storm that hit just 48 hours earlier. This church was over 100 years old, now a jumbled pile of lumber. Holy cow. Oh, my gosh. 
Across America's midsection, more than 100 tornadoes on Friday, from the Gulf states to the Great Lakes. In Ohio, where three people died, there was barely enough time to take cover. We all went into the rest, into the bathroom, and uh, uh, all closed the door and peeked out the window. We just started tra seeing trees coming out of the ground. One person also dead in Alabama, the town of Harvest flattened. They haven't even finished rebuilding from a tornado that hit less than 10 months ago. We had just got in in January and moved back into the house and getting ready to move that mobile home. It picked it up, turned it around and slammed it into the house. Heavy damage as well in North Carolina, where crews are now working to restore power as a third of the country spent the day trying to recover from a day of devastation and heartbreak. We're back live in Marysville, Indiana. I've asked my photographer to give you a very wide shot because just take a look at the landscape. Uh, these are people's lives, and they are completely gone. Everything, every earthly possession they had, gone. Thank goodness that in this particular town, nobody died. But as you can see, there's quite simply nothing left anywhere you look. We can tell you that the police and the National Guard are here trying to make sure that there isn't any looting going on. FEMA is, of course, on the ground, the National Guard on the ground, and President Obama has been in touch with the governors offering federal assistance. Less, assistance rather. Lester, back to you. Tom Costello, thanks. And as if to emphasize the unusual early start to the tornado season, a light snow now falling here in Henryville. Let's go back to Jenna now in New York. It just gets worse. Lester, thank you. Now let's go to the city of West Liberty, Kentucky. Four people were killed in one of the storm's hardest hit areas. Weather Channel's Mike Bettis is there with the story. Mike, how bad is it on the ground there? Well, it truly is a devastating blow for, for this city. I mean, you can just see uh, everything has been reduced to rubble here. This is a very sturdy brick-and-mortar structure, and you, you can't even tell uh, what it once was. But this has been a hard-hit community. Twenty people have died in the Bluegrass State, and we can now tell you that in this particular county and in West Liberty, the death toll has risen to six now. And so it's been a very difficult blow for this town. It's been on lockdown since the tornado struck, and this was a EF3 tornado. It had winds of 140 miles an hour, and imagine a mile-wide tornado bearing down on this town of just 2,000 people. When we talked to the mayor yesterday, he was visibly shaken, could barely bring himself to even describe what happened here in his town. Not one single building here in this downtown district has gone untouched. The municipal building has been hit. The fire station has been hit. The police station has been hit. They're very crippled here. There is no power. They've got the power generators running to try to power what they can and light stands, uh, but it is a very long road to recovery here. It's going to take quite some time. When you're the county seat uh, of this particular county and you've been wiped out. As you can imagine, Jenna, it's going to be a very long road to recovery. The governor has promised assistance, has declared a state of emergency, but the death toll here has risen overnight. And now Kentucky, the hardest hit state with 20 fatalities total. All right, Mike Bettis. Mike, thank you very much.